Hey, Bitch Talk community, this is Erin. This one is for the moms and dads out there who would like a little more calm in their new year. I have this friend, Ed. He's a parent educator who focuses on families with kids with big feelings and challenging behaviors, which, by the way, includes pretty much all toddlers and all teenagers. His parenting counsel is thoughtful and helpful, but he's also fun and irreverent. I promise. He's running a New Year No Yelling Challenge, and he's offering it to the Bitch Talk community for just 10 bucks. You'll get a bite-sized daily lesson, optional group coaching sessions, and access to a virtual community for support. Check it out at villagewellparenting.com and use code BITCHTALK at checkout. Again, villagewellparenting.com, code BITCHTALK, it's one word, and you can start 2024 with more calm and joy in your family life. The link will be in our bio and in our show notes. It felt random, but it's not. No. It's everything, everywhere, all at once. All of it. To your point of like, it just, these things happen, at least for us in Bitch Talk world, in our Bitch Talk land. It's a web. Yeah. Yes. When you're trying to find a serial killer, it's a web of connections. Well, are we going to say, okay, sure. Or magic. (laughs) A web of magic. Yeah, correct. (laughs) Welcome to Bitch Talk. I'm your host, Erin, here with my co-host, Ange, aka Captain Party. And over the last 10 years, we've been elevating marginalized voices through interviews and events. Sometimes over a glass of whiskey. But if you're thirsty for more bitches, find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com and follow us on Instagram. A big thank you to 48 Hills and our listeners for voting us Best of the Bay Best Podcast in 2022. And now, on with the show. Well, looks like we made it. You guys, we made it. Barely. Somehow. somehow, Still (laughs) hanging on by a thread to 2023 <laughs> but here we are somehow Ange got up this morning after our year-end dinner last night and went to work out with a bite on her face cool cool <laughs> on my eye on yeah. her eye my eyes a little bit swollen shut so yeah ha- this ha- video will never catch ha- the light happy, of day happy holidays <laughs> 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 I also woke up with a red dot underneath my eye I think it's also a bite so cool just uh, just the universe reminding you. One last kick it. in the nuts. One last yeah. kick in the nuts before the year's end. <laughs> sure. Let's get bites on our face. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, you can't hide that shit. <laughs> this has been a roller coaster year. I'll, I mean, all of these years have been roller coasters since 2020, I think. Mm-hmm. But this year has been something. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of good. Um, very extreme highs and very extreme lows for my end. Yes. I was barely ever just in the middle. <laughs> That's true. You've been... I was either riding high or real low. So yeah, but we do want to talk about uh, some of our best and or favorite moments of 2023. I told Ange, let's pick five each. I mean, we'll see how this goes. I have five categories. Oh, what? Fav- no, no, no. A favorite, like a favorite. <laughs> No, no, no. Okay, just go. You start and just don't worry. About I'm it. starting. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, your idea. It was my idea. So I um I got inspired by our new friend of the show, Aisha Harris. I listened to their uh pop culture happy hour, their best ofs. And I liked how broad their their categories were or what they picked. So I'm actually gonna go with and I hope it's this year. I'm pretty sure it's earlier this year, uh Usher's Tiny Desk concert. Oh that Mm. that was one of the uh, most <laughs> joyous things I watched for a few times and then sent it to friends. Yes. And just reaffirmed my love for Usher once again. And again, for Tiny Desk. I love Tiny Desk concerts. I, I wish I worked in that building so I could mm-hmm. go watch them in person. Seriously, It is. And his music is timeless. He sounded great that whole watch me what was it watch me that oh, yeah. little video yes. that made the yes. rounds yes and then he's performing at the super bowl and i'm pretty sure it's because of this tiny desk concert it just resurged everyone's love for him so yeah cheers yeah. to that so i'm i'm cheersing to that and i will say aisha harris picked juvenile's tiny desk which i was like mm. oh and i couldn't do that but it is also one of my favorite the violin of the correct years. all of it john batiste 
like mm-hmm. everyone showing up. So anyways, Usher Tiny Desk. Uh, so mine are categories of episodes of ours. So I'm, I'm oh, going to I'm going to start it off. Cute? OK, shut up. I'm going to start it. <laughs> and all of these episodes will be linked in our show notes if you want to reference them. So I'm going to start off with my new friends category. My two favorite new friends that we made this year are uh, in the beginning of the year. Chef Katie Randazzo of the Big Brunch. <gasps> Katie, shout out. We have plans with them to go to the Taco Bell and Pacifica. And they also had COVID at the time, but was still so energetic and lovely. And I feel like we had a really fun conversation. Uh, But my ultimate favorite friend of the year is Samantha Irby, who Aaron here made it happen. (laughs) Thanks to the gram or whatever you slid into some something. No, dude, you know, I, uh, I like to uh, research and that's what I'm calling it. Um, She stalks. I stalk. No, I do my research. I, I used to be a producer. I still am a producer, I guess. But I uh, use my research skills. I knew that they were having a new book coming out this year. So I just go to the publisher, reach out to them. And how fun was that fucking interview? Well, they were on my list as well. So thank you. I mean, it's Samantha Ruby. I've been a fan for years. Um, I pretty much have every book of hers. I have signed up for her hilarious and random email newsletter <laughs> that talks about judge mathis um because she's obsessed <laughs> i don't know she wrote for shrill love that show i want Ange to watch that and she wrote for the latest sex in the city which you know people will hate on it but it's still whatever and i'm just so glad i think she's not not uh this second season and just like that she's possibly an exec producer or producer on that show so i don't know i love all things samantha irby for Mm -hmm. me she can't do any wrong like really like we are kindred spirits that's how i feel about samantha irby and if you want to listen to just one of our most fun conversations of the year easily that's the one and she has uh confirmed that she will be part of our old old lady fest music festival that will happen one year and yeah it was definitely a highlight correct okay so so since you piggybacked on that do i get to go again Yes, I would say okay. yes. This next one category was is a two parter that oh. we didn't plan. So um, when we were at Slam Dance in Park City in January and we interviewed um, Annie of Who's Annie, it's a series. Yeah, episodic. As well as the director. Yes. And that was great. We had a good time. We we we, had, we bonded, whatever. And then a few months later, we interview Zach Graff, who directed A Good Person, which is also a really really great movie if you haven't seen it yet and i i mentioned to him that annie is a background actor and she was in his film and we hit and interviewed her for her series that's about her being a background actor anyway it it was just something i threw out there and she responded to it in a really beautiful way she and we didn't even know that she was listening to our (laughs) our show yeah and she just wrote something really beautiful on, on Instagram when she heard it. And it just made me feel really good. And I, I feel like that's kind of why we do this is because when we're talking to Zach Brav, we can bring up Annie and, you know, we just, it's this, this weird connection that happened. And that, that was a definite highlight for me this year. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you. That's why I like doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'm going to bring up one of our favorite and somewhat random interviews but we were trying to make it happen for months there is going to be a documentary coming out about the indigo girls in 2024 Mm. Mm -hmm. and we interviewed the director at south by southwest we were hoping for the indigo girls also just because you know it's the indigo girls um but i think they were in there for like they were at south by for one night literally they were in and out they were also at sundance and we were trying to interview them Mm -hmm. so fast forward the director's wonderful we loved the director yes Mm -hmm. um and after her interview i mean just fun fact she went and paddle boarded in austin like right after our interview which was hilarious she was wearing her like tivas she's like off to go stand up paddle board now yeah Yeah. we're like cool (laughs) so then fast forward uh indigo girls were playing at stern grove uh which is one of our favorite festivals in san francisco it's free concert for everyone and I think it was just we I we kept in touch with the publicist of the film and just asked, like, we're in San Francisco. Could we just do this? And we literally got the confirmation the day before mm-hmm. to interview the Indigo Girls in person. 
And some we pulled it together and we did it. And we interviewed them along with my husband, who was our audio producer on that one, which I'm sure he'd be like, I know I barely audio produce. But I mean, he helped and we sat in this tiny ass dressing room with them that didn't have the best sound, uh, but we made it happen. And they were so gracious with their time before they went out and played in front of thousands of people. <laughs> they did not seem like they were about to play for, for, for thousands of people. They were so relaxed. So and chill. Really funny when they walked in. She was like, hi, I'm Emily. I was like, yeah, yeah duh. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. They kind of and, I, and I think the connector of that also, Ange, is like we interviewed them. And then maybe it was a month later, we got to see the press screening of uh, Barbie. Mm -hmm. And spoiler, one of the main songs in Barbie is an Indigo Girls song, mm -hmm. which was <laughs> fucking crazy. It felt random, but I, it's not. It's, no. it's everything, everywhere, all at once. All of it. So mm -hmm. it was all of, to your point of like, it just, these things happen, at least for us in bitch talk world. In our bitch talk land. <laughs> it's a web. Yeah. Like yes. when you're trying to find a serial killer, it's a web of connections. Well, are we going to say, okay, sure. <laughs> or magic. <laughs> a web of magic. Yeah, correct. <laughs> so well, Indigo Girls. I had them on my, I had them on my list as well because it was really special, but this was my um, elder musical inspiration uh, category. And yes. it was the Indigo Girls as well as Fanny, the right to rock. Who, uh, Fanny, Fanny, thank you. Who, if you if you don't know, they were the first all woman band to put out a record on a major label, and this was in the early seventies. And the band was founded by sisters, Filipino sisters, June and Jean Millington. And we got to interview their director, Bobby Joe Hart, and she was fucking rad. But then um, I got to see them perform at Yerba Buena. Unfortunately, Annie or Annie Aaron couldn't go, but. Uh, getting to see them perform after watching the documentary. It was just really special. And they're all in their 60s, 70s now. Sure, 60s or 70s, uh, yeah. And that was a really special moment. And there were a lot of Filipinos in the audience. There was a lot of Filipino pride uh, Yo, because a lot yeah. of people don't know about them. It's insane. And they were, they paved the way for the Go-Go's and I mean, fill in, you know, the blank of all the badass women bands that came after them. So uh, yep, this that was our musical, my musical inspiration for the year. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I have a couple of old favorites. Kamau's been on our show like six or seven times. Now I'm losing count, um, and that's fine because he's like a forever guest. But being able to interview him, first of all, in person at his production studio um, offices in Oakland was great. And the fact that we saw him walking down the street before we even <laughs> getting a burrito, <laughs> yes, interviewing him and people are he's like waving to people. I think we yelled at him from our yeah. car. I don't remember. But May uh, the mayor of P Piedmont Ave. Correct. It was just it was fun to see him and meet some of his staff and um, just sit down in person again. And we haven't the only other time in, uh, in person was that red carpet, really uh, at Sundance earlier this year for uh Stephen Curry's doc it was fun and we got to tour and uh talk some shit on and off mic and mm -hmm. you know he's our family so shout out to Kamau well on the topic of family I will say it's been a special year because we got to sandwich the year with another one of our favorites David Diggs oh yeah of course we had he was our first episode of the year and then he we just had him on in November so um the specialty of this year is he was never on to sell a show. He was just right. on to shoot the shit with us. We it was just we just wanted to have him on because we missed talking to him. And he, especially in this last episode, shared a really cute story with us um, that you can just you'll just have to listen to. But it was really sweet. A story about South by Southwest. And I just love talking to him. And he's just such a genuine person. Mm -hmm. Aside from all the talent, he's just got a big heart and it's always special when we get to talk to him. So, yeah, well, I was going to say that special story that he shared. Somehow we were sort of a part of and not a part of <laughs> like we were It's because of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah sure. OK, um, <laughs> but not, you know, I'll I'll talk about our last interview of the year that just came out. Um mm. I think a new friend. I'm surprised he wasn't on your new friends of the year. But oh, no, this friend... is my next category. Go oh, ahead. I'll pick you back. I'll, yeah. I'll start. Yes, you of course. Yes. So 
you know, we were pitched this movie called American Fiction a few months ago and not really familiar with the screenwriter or director. But once I started looking him up, I'm like, oh, he's done a lot of things we already loved, like The Good Place, which is one of our favorite shows. He did Master of None, which is one of my favorite shows as well. Like his writing credits are like, OK, we've, we've succession. Seen stuff. He was all oh, right. Yeah. Oh, duh. Succession. A little thing yeah. called. Yeah. yeah. A little show. So anyways, um, we saw the movie. We loved the movie. Um, we love the spirit of the movie, the feel of the movie. It's just, it's very good. And then we're, we we were jazzed to interview him. The morning of the interview, we're waiting in the, hall- the hallway. <laughs> and he starts walking down the hallway. And I was like, oh, okay. And uh, this is, you know, who we're interviewing. And I said that specifically because of the shirt he was wearing. He was wearing a Madonna Truth or Dare shirt. Now, let's... Who, what director is just bouncing in at 10 a.m. with that shirt on, right? So mm-hmm. Ange looks at me. She's like, that's the director. I'm like, have you not Googled? So anyways. I like to be surprised. Them. Yes, I know. Um, I'm the opposite of you. You stalk and I'm just like, well, I research. Deborah Winger. I, res- I research. And, <laughs> uh, but when we got in the room, he was super chill. And uh, Ange and him just kind of hit it off talking about some stuff beforehand And then once the mics rolled, it was just so easy. He was so great. We're the first interview we call us. We're we're the fluffers Fluffers. of the day and uh, interview fluffers. And it was just great. And we've kept in touch over Instagram. And uh, those are the only that's the only thing that social media is good for, really, is actually being in touch with these types of people. But his film's doing really well. Again, it's called American Fiction. I saw it again on Christmas. Loved it. Brought my husband and my mom and. We all really enjoyed it. I made them listen to our interview afterwards in the car um, on the ride home. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we love Corey Jefferson. We hope to see more from him. I'm pretty sure he's going to get some awards to Dom. So that's my one of my top interviews. Yes. And that's my my last category is. Oh, and I mean this in a very respectful way. My new crushes of the year. Oh, so yeah. it's uh, Randall Park for shortcomings, oh, which well, Aaron, duh. unfortunately, I was not missed. there. But he in person is just and I mean this respectfully, I don't mean like this lessfully, but crushes in the way of not only is their art great, but they're just really lovely human beings. Uh, Randall Park was very calm and relaxed and friendly and accommodating and he didn't have to be. And uh, I really appreciated that about him. And the same with Court Jefferson, like. Like Aaron said, we we were already bonding before the interview started. And then as he was talking, just the things he was saying just really resonated with us and our beliefs and our morals, I guess, as humans. And not only that, but his film is probably my favorite of the year. So those are my crushes of the year. Oh, amongst just, others, just two <laughs> amongst others. Those are just the top ones. But I mean that if you're listening with all due respect, some are married, some I don't know, but just a crush, like a lovely human. It's just that all warmth. around it's mm-hmm. when you walk into the room and you start talking to folks, at least for me. And I'm like, oh, OK, they they are they are cool and they feel like real human beings. Mm-hmm. And you <laughs> and feel not, it right away. It's and they're crazy. not putting it on. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes we walk in a room and it's business. It's just business. You sit, you do the interview and you're out and they're nice. But there's mm-hmm. just um, a connection that mm-hmm. we can sometimes feel from our guests so oh I love that I do want to do honorable mentions though for some stuff especially films uh Joyride I feel is not getting the shine that it deserves Uh, correct and it's I mean it's kind of because they weren't on bitch talk let's be honest but anyways and also the writer's (laughs) strike or the actor oh both all the strikes go on the run that they deserved to talk about the film yeah so if you can go find that it's I think that's one of our most favorite films of the year. Like American fiction is one of the better, best um, mm-hmm. dramedies out there. But Joyride is just like fucking it's bitch talk as a movie. Yeah. I'm glad we got to watch it together in a theater. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, that's one of my favorites. More recently, Saltburn is another one. I'm so mm. glad we got to watch it in a theater mm-hmm. and just be like, what the fuck but yes it's um, wild yeah it's fun <laughs> that for entertaining i guess it's entertaining. entertaining i think um if you are like done with the holidays which i feel mentally i'm a little done and you just need to be out mentally of it go watch Saltburn. <laughs> it's also <laughs> streaming you can go see it at theater but you can also 
watch it watch uh, it alone in oh or that under a blanket maybe <laughs> in a dark I don't room know. i don't know wow wow we wow <laughs> uh i want to give a shout out to earth mama oh, that was another interview. i almost put that on my list yes uh, Tiana Moore, she's a local hip hop musician over in Oakland. Um, she's the lead actress in this beautiful film about mm. single motherhood. Um, that's, and I love the poster. That's my favorite poster of the year. Also those colors. Mm -hmm. I always look at that. I'm like, I want a room like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really soothing, but please go find that movie. It is getting some awards noms. I doubt Academy will We'll do it. I haven't seen it on any lists yet, but it should be maybe independent spirit. Probably our favorite awards mm -hmm. of the year. But Earth Mama, Past Lives, which Ange hasn't seen. A lot of people are talking about it. It's out there. It's going to be on awards noms. Um, it's such a good movie. It's really heartfelt. And there's one that no one's talking about really. And maybe it's because it's just Wes Anderson, but Asteroid City. Uh, I love seeing in the theater with you, Ange. The colors are so beautiful. Wes Anderson just is Wes Anderson. He's not going to really stray too much. And I think um, when you and I talked about it, it was just nice to be in his world for like 90 mm -hmm. minutes to an hour. That's another hours. one. He'll he'll pull you out of whatever yeah. funk you're in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm actually in the middle of it, watching it at home with my husband. Um, and I forgot some of the other stars that are in it until I mm -hmm. started watching it. Like, oh, yeah. Like a one second cameo from big name stars. <laughs> well, like our friend, uh, not our friend, but uh, Jeffrey Wright, who's in American Fiction, I forgot, is also in our Aspen friend. City. Just I know, I know. Our friend or <laughs> our friend Jeffrey Wright. We no, use the term loosely. Yes, that one's loose. But uh, yeah, those are those are just some of my film faves. Of well, the I'll year. give one more side shout out to our actual new friend, Aisha Harris. And oh, the reason, if you're listening, the reason why I didn't add you to my new friend list is because you're an actual friend and that I was kind of <laughs> saying facetiously, our new friend, Samantha Irby, but she is an actual friend now and a lovely person. And she invited us to have this unique experience at the Battery and we've hung out since then. And uh, we're gonna Sundance together and it's just yeah. been a great friendship. And um, that was a really fun episode to record as well out in Oakland. So it was. shout out to that. Shout out to you, Aisha. Thank you for finding us and saying hi. The new season is Somebody Somewhere, of course. Oh, yes. The Bear, specifically episodes Fishes and Forks, which are, those are in sequential order. I could just watch those two episodes, and I don't think you really need to watch. Honestly, you could watch those on their own. There is a show I started earlier this year, I think, called Single Drunk Female. I don't think it's going to get renewed um, I believe there's two or three seasons, but I really, really liked this show and I don't feel like it got the shine that it needed, but it was really well done. I think it's on Hulu. Um, but if you're looking for something new to watch, I really like that show, Single Drunk Female. So, oh, and I already said this before, but Fleabag, I know I'm 10 years, <laughs> I know I'm so 10 years too late, uh, but holy shit balls. Fleabag, what is this, Y2K? Correct. <laughs> feels uh, like it <laughs> uh, and also Ange, thank you for still riding the bitch talk train this is uh <laughs> been a been a roller coaster of a year we're it still riding, on, riding it a little bit uh but i'm excited to go back to sundance i'm excited to go to south by southwest again and um put on uh i think more live events even if there's happy hours um mm -hmm. those are fun and i like to meet more people out there and and talk to them and shout out last night to our dinner at Leho Leho Ugh. Yacht Club in San Francisco. Shout I out to the whole about staff. It. Yeah, I'm like Millie, yes. Millie the Millie. GM. I guess she's the GM and she yes. was just so casually cool and calm yes. and collected. Like GMs don't act that way <laughs> in my experience. So I, <laughs> no. And so I did my research this morning and I'm like, uh, of course, see if she's on. Well, they're really good about highlighting kind of like their staff on their website, which is, I think, really important. Restaurants don't do that. Mm -hmm. And so she's on there. And so I was reading her little bio, which was great. But specifically, it says she likes to listen to podcasts in her bio. And she asked us about our, our podcast. Oh, yeah. All right. So, shout out to you, Millie. Millie, we had an incredible time. We accept gift cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we just had an incredible time. That mm -hmm. duck liver moose pate on that banana bread like Correct. i 
woke up talking about it again. So go there. Uh, if you want to have a really special night out or you just want to have a night out, go to Leho Leo Yacht, Yacht Club. Uh, make a reservation. They do accept walk-ins, but you can reserve up to a month out um, to eat there. It's a really special place. And get the get the tasting menu. If you don't have any allergies or anything, just just do it because they send out things that are off menu. And those were actually my favorite things of the meal were the off menu dishes. It was ridiculous. And bananas. I mean, y'all are doing something right. Okay. Well, uh, since we've basically wrapped up the year, but I want to say if you have been on the show this year, everybody look we love all of you and we thank you for keeping us going and keeping us inspired it's really hard to pick favorites just know that <laughs> yes yeah it's favorites are lame but right you know these are hot these are little highlights of the year so anyways moving on to our moments of pleasure uh, mine is gonna be we went to portland and we saw a movie that we're in what is that yours too yeah <laughs> Obviously, how could it not be our moment of pleasure? Yeah, I mean, we got to talk about that for a minute. Let's just talk about it. Let's just marinate. So Ange and I are in a movie. It will be rolling <laughs> out in 2024. It's called Gasoline Rainbow. It's ridiculous. Um, but we finally got to see it. And we booked the trip a couple months ago because it got finalized a couple months ago that there's just going to be a cast and crew screening up in Portland where they originally shot most of the film, if not all. Inside Portland, outside Portland. So um, we shot this scene in summer of 2021 in Portland, where it's hot as balls. It's like 116, 117 degrees out. Not kidding. And, uh, you know, they set up the scene where they're like, you know, you're just going to be in a dive bar playing pool. And it was based off a photo that I had put on Instagram of Ange. And I think I think the rest of the team was in that, um, in the photos I posted, but so we we're like, yeah, cool. We can do that. And we did. And we shot for like four or five hours total. Mm -hmm. And so um, meaning you know, we just played pool and drank whiskey. For yeah. Four and hours. played the jukebox. And you played music. Yeah. Yes. And so, yeah. So we got to see it in an actual theater, a beautiful theater, the Hollywood Theater in Portland. And we had no idea how much of the film we were going to be in. We had no idea how long the scene. We had no idea what we had said, you know, like who remembers from that long ago, but it was a really, really beautiful film as we knew it was going to be the Ross brothers are the directors, really talented directors. And the film was, I don't know. I had all the heart, heart feelings. <laughs> it's about yeah. a, a teenage road trip, 18, a, a group of 18 year olds who are kind of lost. They finished school and they don't really know what they're going to do with their lives. So they want to go on one last hurrah. Right. And uh, somebody said, and I totally relate to this, the film made me feel old and also young again, because I very much related to a lot of their sentiments of feeling confused or lost, or, you know, you're still trying to find yourself. I mean, I feel like that never stops. And um, for me, uh, it was a special, a special time because it was a really hard time for me. My dad had just passed away six months prior and I was taking care of my mom who was also really sick. So I was able to go on this trip, thankfully, uh, to be part of the film. But I like that in the scene, I'm talking to the girl and we're connecting over how much we love our dads, but that doesn't, the entirety of our conversation is not in the film, but I know that that's how I was feeling and what we were doing at the time. So it was really emotional and special for me to watch it, knowing that how deep it was for me. It wasn't just sitting there playing pool and being in this movie. It was like, we were bonding over our dads and I had no idea that that's what it was going to become. So Yep. And it's locked, <laughs> locked forever. Yeah. Premiered so, in Venice. No big yeah, deal. No big deal. <laughs> um, but also Portland's just charming as fuck. I mean, every time my husband and I go up there, we're like, man. And I also think we could live here. We went hard. <laughs> what do we think? We're in our twenties. Like, Dude, we I... went every night very, very hard. But stupid. we're stupid. We're I don't know what stupid. we're so stupid. And I don't know why. I don't I really don't know why it was that hard every night. Because, because it was just so easy, I think. That's that why. too. It was very and, easy for us. And, oh, this place looks fun. Oh, that looks and, good. And more uh less expensive than San Francisco. So you're just like your dollar goes further there. Um, but we yeah, we had a we had a really good time. <laughs> 
Shout out to Sandwich PDX, man. Mm. One of the best sandwiches I've mm-hmm. had in a really long time. I And as soon as we walked in, they're playing my favorite soundtrack from the movie Chef. Like mm-hmm. they they cure and smoke, it seemed like, all their meats like on the premise. A woman owns the sandwich, sandwich shop. Had a, my, one of my favorite signs I've seen in a long time in a bathroom, specifically for those that stand up and pee. And uh, I just love that place. If you're Mm -hmm. in Portland, go get a sandwich there. I think they're open every day. And uh, I loved it. I mean, every meal I loved, we didn't really eat meals that day. That was the only (laughs) real meal. We had little snacks here and there. Yeah. But uh, (laughs) man, it Portland, you can party in Portland, but it doesn't have to be as crazy as us. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I had whiplash after uh, yeah one a of few the- times probably Sunny Sunny oh, yeah. shout out if Sunny's listening <laughs> yeah yeah and met a new friend named Sunny I got, and they- I got neck whiplash <laughs> from dancing too hard yeah they were doing some kind of I don't Dance even know moves, what kind of- it's what it is uh sure <laughs> I don't know where but yeah yeah Portland we love it mm-hmm. I love Portland I I don't know it's got a vibe yeah. So that was what a way to cap off the year. Yeah. And we saw ourselves on the big screen and it wasn't as scary <laughs> as I thought it would be. We I was didn't scared look as, as um, hefty horizontally challenged as I thought we would. <laughs> I was like, the camera adds 10 and the COVID added 20. So <laughs> this is going to be rough. And it was not as rough. So thank you. The Ross brothers, I, I they said they used a thinning uh, filter yes. for that. Scene. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. We appreciate that hardcore but yeah we had the same moment of pleasure i just that trip was great so was I, I have nothing more yeah. to say it was perfect i love i love portland that caps off our year um for anyone who's having a hard time right now you know it's one second at a time <laughs> correct and uh here's hoping for a healthy new year and, maybe uh, a, maybe a slower pace 2024 yeah just, just you know we'll take it down a notch so right. um we'll be honest right now as of our episodes dropping unless something miraculous happens uh we're probably not going to put out any episodes until we're done with Sundance um maybe we'll put one out during Sundance or right before but it's going to be limited just because we got to put our head down and reminded me that we basically only have three weeks until Sundance. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so we have to watch a lot of movies. Um, I know poor us, but uh, we got to focus and get to Sundance and uh, do, do the damn thing. And we're excited. So uh, it'll be slow, slowly rolling out episodes in 2024. Um, If you're interested in helping us cover our expenses in Sundance, because it is very expensive, uh, we'll have links in our show notes. You can also go to our Instagram bio. It's a real quick link in our bio and you can either Venmo or PayPal. Uh, if there's any other way you want to give, there's nothing too small or too large that will help uh, cover travel, lodging, and the in-between. So um, thank you so much to everyone else who's already donated. Um, we really value your support. What we do uh, is free. <laughs> we don't charge for our content. So any support is really helpful. And this is 10 years of bitch talk. So it has been an especially special year. So thanks for sticking with us. Happy New Year, y'all. We we need some rest. <laughs> yeah, we See need you to soon. Stop. We need to stop moving for a minute. All right. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for joining us on today's show. You can find more information about this episode in our show notes. If you're missing us, you can visit us at bitchtalkpodcast.com to sign up for our newsletter and buy us a cup of coffee. Did you know we're also on the radio? You can find us at bff.fm. And lastly, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. All the cool bitches are doing it. This podcast is a proud member of the bff.fm podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. bff.fm, best frequencies forever.